I want to contribute. I want to, to the best I can, make a difference. I want to do something that is sustainable. I really want that. The wind's blowing all the time. You either catch it or you don't. We were in Livingston explaining to people about the potential for wind development in community wind. It's a real windy place. And U.S. Senator Max Bacchus showed up and we started talking and he explained to us that he had created this clean renewable energy bond program to allow for community sized wind development for federal support of that. And he said to us, go out, tell the cities and counties, get them interested in doing this. My name is Gene Townsend. I've been the mayor now for 23 years and uh, six years on the city council before that. I became mayor January uh, 1st of 2006. Uh, my mom was the first woman ever to be elected to the city council mm -hmm. in Big Timber. I'm Claude Matney and I develop community wind projects. Power is a big cost of running a community, of running a business, of running a farm, and it's becoming bigger all the time. As fuel prices go up, it's more and more desirable to be capturing your own power, and it's so neat in windswept eastern Montana to take for yourselves what your natural resources are giving you. This is my office right here. Um, when I became the mayor, um, within a month, I realized where all of our money was going in mm -hmm. the city. And trapping some of that and rerouting it into things that were more user-friendly would be a good thing. We went to them and said, look, here's a chance to generate some electricity, to improve your budget, to make some money so that the money you're not spending to light the courthouse or light the jail might be used to fill the potholes or any of the other things you don't have enough money for. So um, down at our sewage lagoon, um, we have aerators that pump air into uh, the wastewater. And those bills were, you know, they're running close to $3,000 a month um, just to aerate that wastewater. And I thought at that time, gosh, couldn't we help out with this electricity somehow? Everything that the city uses as far as our, our well pumps and our sewer lagoon pumps and our lift pumps all be paid for by wind generation, which is going to save the people tax dollars and on their water bill. Um, Senator Baucus um, came up with the clean renewable energy bonds, mm -hmm. and we heard about that. Um, so we got some information. Um, an engineering firm was working on the applications for that, brought it before the council, they were excited, um, so we applied. The Anaconda Company and Montana Power controlled the state. They owned the newspapers, they controlled the legislature, they actually done everything they could to keep control of the state. And one of the ways they done this is through the legislature that they really limited the power of local government. And their thoughts were, it's a lot easier to deal with 90 or 150 legislators twice a year in Helena than it is with all these damn little towns in Montana and stuff. And so, you know, pretty good battle plan, really. And it was very successful until they actually, the 
the people of Montana decided to write a new state constitution and in 1973 some of this dominance went away. And so the legislature, even though it's not dominated by these two factors anymore, still has that mentality. Um, so we applied and actually uh, received like 92000 and some odd dollars um, worth of bonding authority. Well then the problem was that the city was not allowed to sell power. Then there was a whole process of having to go through the local legislature, the state legislature, in order to get permission for small cities to sell power, which happened at a last-ditch effort uh, in the legislature, but it, it did squeak through. And then we were able to continue with our application, and we're in the process of due diligence now. They were awarded a CREB allocation and now, so they have the right to sell the bonds. And in order to get somebody to buy the bonds, you've got to do due diligence. In other words, the guy who's going to put the money into the bonds, he has to know that the wind is there, he has to know that there's a way to hook it up, he has to know that there's a viable economic scenario. And that's called due diligence. That's, that, that's, once you get the authority to issue the bonds, you still got to get somebody to buy them. And if you can't do the due diligence to convince the buyer, then you don't get the bond sold and the project doesn't go forward. One of the problems is that they don't have any money to begin with. They don't even have enough money to uh, initiate the studies that are necessary to get the federal money. So it's sort of like a, a vicious cycle. And for people, for, for these uh, citizen politicians in that position, the county commissioners and the city commissioners, they don't... Um, you know, there's, there's, there's a part of them that has to say, I'd rather not make a mistake, even though it might be a good deal. If I don't do anything, I won't make a mistake. You can always say there are a lot of things that could go wrong. And you could start out with a half-empty glass and then just stay there and never sign the paper, never go forward. But when it came time to really say, do we have 4,000 available dollars? Now you have to remember our budget is very small to start the due diligence on this project. Every single one of them said, yes, we do. So we're, we're going down the road here, and we are taking on a tremendous amount of responsibility with the payback of that money. Um, but we're willing to do it because the outcome is so great for us on the other end. And it fits with the way we feel about alternative energy, which is so important. Somebody asked me what the downside to putting up community wind was, and I said, well, there's a strong coal interest in Montana, and that if we, the more wind turbines we put up, the less coal we're going to burn, and that's bad for the coal industry. Well, you know, we got probably billions of tons of coal reserves, which is a well-known fact, but can we keep burning it without suffering some of the repercussions that we may be? Now, I mean, is global warming real, you know? I, you know, in my mind it is, you know, there's probably 10 people that will argue differently with me, but I mean, I think we have to do something, and if we can just do a small part. I mean, is what Three Forks and Big Timber are going to do going to make a difference? Probably not a noticeable difference, but if all the other 129 towns in Montana did it, yeah, maybe we could make a difference. I always believe that anything that a big city can do, a small town can do on a different level. What's your population now? Uh, 1,745, and I saw a pregnant lady the other day. <laughs>
Good morning. Uh, I'm here to talk to you today about a federal program that we've gotten involved in that's been really uh, growing uh, successfully. We're in the third year now. I think about my children trying to get started. I think about them trying to live a life like they've seen us live. And I think about them facing a world where uh, our United States economy is going down and I worry about the lives they're going to live and our environment itself becoming hostile and leading to uh, a domino effect of people uh, being hurt and not having enough. And even if it's hopeless, even if it were hopeless, um, I want to contribute. I want to to the best I can make a difference. I want to uh, do something that uh, is sustainable, really want that.